Well, children, have I got a lesson for you today. Well, oh, the Lord has been good. Now, um, I was called crazy again today um, <laughs> by somebody who said she's been watching me for years and still can't understand me. And uh, so I'd have to ask, well, who's crazy, lady? <laughs> but anyway... And that brought me on to another video, which I believe it was a revelation. And I'll show you a little bit of this video. It's of a guy who's had a dream, and um, it's upset a lot of people, apparently. And uh, because it actually sort of shows, um, it shows all these people, um, you know, the bad guys, as uh, crackers, you know, with crackers like firecrackers, you know, with the wicks and everything coming out of their head. And so after she told me that, it, I, you know, I thought, oh, that's what the meaning of a dream is, you know, that all these people are crackers. And it took me to, um, it, you know, it took me, what he described in his dream um, just reminded me of second address. And I'll just, um, you know, read that to you. This is where it talks about people can't even go from city to city. The sword that will destroy them is not far away. Okay, hang on. Mm. Nation will draw sword against nation and go to war. Stable government will be at an end. One faction will prevail over another, caring nothing in their day of power for king or leading man of rank. A man may want to visit a city, but he will not able be able to do so. Well, that's happening, isn't it? Even in, in New York, you can't even go there now. For ambition and rivalry will have reduced cities to chaos, destroyed houses and filled men with panic. A man will violently assault his neighbor's house and plunder his goods. No pity will restrain him when he is in the grip of famine and grinding misery. But the one that I actually um, sent to him, where is it? This one here. Um, Fierce flames are being kindled to burn you. A horde will descend on you. They will seize some of you and make you eat pagan sacrifices. So, I mean, is that taking, you know, force some of you to take um, a vaccine? Those who give in to them will be derided, taunted and trampled on. Trampled on. In place after place and in all the neighbourhoods, there will be a violent attack on those who fear the Lord. Their enemies will be like madmen, plundering and destroying without mercy those who still fear the Lord. They will destroy and plunder their property and throw them out of their homes. Then it will be seen that my chosen people have stood the test like gold in the assayer's fire. So there you have it, guys. Um, that's um, pretty conclusive um, evidence that, you know, there is not going to be an escape out of here, um, but the actual fires are going to be what brings you through, which is what I've told you about the other. You know, this is the Resh, okay? So this is when I talked about the Resh, which is the head man, and as you can see, that is obviously, this is the ancient Resh, and um, it's in 20, 20, you know, 20, which is now is 20, and this is the, the modern resh, that's Hebrew in case you don't know, and um, and that's talking about Donald Trump, of course, which is the God man, and that's where we are now, it's the jubilee, it's the jubilee, you know, and I just saw today that, um, that there was some um, agreement, um, you know, peace treaty, um, and I suppose a lot of people be saying, oh, antichrist, antichrist, but they're not realizing it's the jubilee. This is what God has talked about. And um, so I'm just going to take you now to the blessing that the Lord gave me today when I decided just to look up, because I've told you that clouds, the anon and, and clouds, so that Jesus talked about that he's coming on the clouds, that and uh, that that's anon, so you know, so I, you know, for Q anon or Q anon. So today I thought I'd just look up Q and see what that means, and that took me to this. And I'm just going to play it for you. We'll discover what God revealed about the end from the beginning. In order to recognize the prophetic significance of the six-letter Hebrew word Bereshit, we need to figure out the meaning of each of the six letters or pictograms that were from the very beginning and are to this day embedded in the language that God created in order to reveal his living word to mankind. Bet. 
Bet is the very first letter or pictogram revealed in God's Word. Bet is the pictogram of the floor plan of a house or a tent that brings to mind the idea of a home. Bet is also the number two. Let's begin unfolding the most amazing revelation ever disclosed in the Bible by asking the one question every child would ask if he saw a picture of a tent. Who is inside the tent? The letter bet pictured as a tent is also the one letter in Hebrew that is literally translated as in or inside. Okay, so first start of the blessings today. This is a painting. This is, I didn't do this one. This is a painting that was done for me, so it's actually a portrait of me. And it was done by um, dear friend, artist, Dennis Knight Turner. He's now passed away, passed on. Um, there wasn't anything religious about this man, but you can see that he has um, copied, your, he, he obviously, um, because he's a true artist, he can see into the spirit. So when he saw me, and this was for my wedding to Dennis, and so this is a picture of Dennis and I, and the, the um, you can see the tent, you know, and the, the reddish haired person in the, in the middle of the box. That represents me, and you can see how, how Dennis surrounds me. So it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful painting, but what a blessing when I saw it um, um, today. And it just totally, you know, um, agrees with what I've been saying, what the Lord's been telling me, that, um, you know, that in the spirit that I am Donald Trump's wife. And as I would be, if he is, if he's the Messiah, Ben David, as I believe he is, and of course Jesus is the husband, um, then, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, I'm in his house. So this is, and so there it is in the beginning, that house is in the, the Hebrew language. And uh, I'm in that tent, praise the Lord. So perhaps asking, who is in or inside the tent is not such a silly question. Just who is inside the tent? Perhaps the next Hebrew letter will give us a clue. Resh. The letter Resh is a symbol of a head that brings to mind the idea of the head person or prince. Okay, so there's, this one here is just slightly different and you can see, you know, even the, the shape of Donald's hair quite clearly, but um, that's just a... Resh, the second letter in Bereshit, is also the number 200. 200 is the number that is used in the Bible to declare the all-sufficiency of God and the complete insufficiency of man. Amazingly, the first two letters in the word Bereshit is a Hebrew word for son. Bet Resh, pronounced bar, is translated son in Hebrew. So now we know who is in the tent. He is someone's son. He is also the head person or prince. But whose son is he? The third letter in Bereshit gives us the answer. Aleph. The third letter in Bereshit is Aleph, pictured as an ox. Aleph is a symbol of the strong leader, pictured as an ox. Aleph is also the number one. It's not surprising that Aleph is the first letter in Elohim, the name of God first revealed in the Bible. Aleph is a picture that is ideally meant to convey the idea of God. Go okay, so you'll also remember that as a confirmation of the, the dream that I had in the video that I made yesterday when I talked about the first, one of the first dreams I've had, which I associated with Donald Trump, which was um, as the Red Bull, and I can pinned it, and the video's called, um, um, the video's called, um, The War Is Over, The Red Bull, Trump, Nibiru, Planet X is coming to get us, okay, so you can see that up online, so that's about five years old now, but that, I also compared it to Planet X, now that is, um, the constellation or the, of Taurus, so that's actually, um, you know, the Earth constellation of what's the, the the repeat of what's in the sky, 
and um, so this is and this is planet X here I'll just read you what it says it says here it says the constellation of Taurus mapped over Asia Minor which is modern Turkey in ancient times this minor continent was associated with the constellation of Taurus as evidenced by the mountains that still bear its name. So that's probably why so many people have um, claimed that the Antichrist comes from um, is Erdogan because um, you know because he comes from Turkey, you know. But of course, that's because um, you know they're just totally misinterpreting Revelation 9 and 20 and seeing Apollo as the Antichrist, but he isn't. The seven churches mentioned in Revelation 1 to 3 roughly correspond to the Hi to Hades or Hyades, an asterism in the face of the bull, Patmos, which most likely corresponds to the place that planet X will uh, reappear in the face of Taurus, explaining why Jesus appeared there to John. Okay, so I hope you understand that. So that was on Patmos, on the Isle of Patmos, is where Jesus came and gave that revelation to John. God the Father, the strong leader that guides and directs his family. But wait, there's more. When we add Aleph to the first two letters in Bereshit, we discover another Hebrew word. Bet, Resh, Aleph, the first three Hebrew letters in Bereshit, is also the Hebrew word for created or creator. So who is in the bet or tent? The bet resh. The sun is in the tent. Whose son is he? He is the bet resh aleph, the son of God. But he's also the bet resh aleph, the creator. Sheen. Sheen, the fourth letter in Bereshit, is pictured as teeth. Teeth press down, crush, and destroy. Sheen is also a signature letter, the one letter that God uses to signify his special ownership of something. Sheen is also the number 300. 300 is an amplification of the sacred number 3. 3 means divine perfection. 300 signifies a divinely appointed blood sacrifice that results in victory over death. Amazingly, we find another Hebrew word nested in Bereshit. Sheen, the fourth letter in Bereshit, is also the last letter in the Hebrew word Resh. Notice that the single Hebrew letter Resh, that is the second letter in Bereshit, is also the three-letter Hebrew word Resh, spelled Resh, Aleph, Sheen. Resh, the three-letter word, confirms the meaning of the single letter Resh. To be clear, Resh is not only the name of a letter, it's also a three-letter word that means prince, or head person, or first in Hebrew. Now I want to show you something that's very important. Remember the Hebrew word bar translated as sun? The word that we found nested in the first two letters in Bereshit? Notice that in the word bar, the Resh, or prince, is in or inside the bet. He is inside the tent. With that in mind, we must ask why God put both the single letter Resh and then nested the three-letter word Resh in Bereshit. Let me share at least one obvious reason. The reason is that the Lord wanted us to notice something. He wanted us to notice that the Resh Aleph Sheen, the prince, has come out of the tent. The prince has gone out of his home. A picture is worth a thousand words. The prince who was inside the house is now coming out of the house. Are you starting to understand how God communicates with his children? For of such is the kingdom of heaven, our future home. Why is the prince coming out of the tent? The next three pictographs that compose the Hebrew word Bereshit give us the answer. If sheen, the picture of teeth, means to crush and destroy, then we must ask, is the Son of God coming out of the tent to be crushed and destroyed? Or, is he coming out of the tent to crush and destroy? Or could it be both? Yod. We'll begin to unravel this mystery as we look at the Hebrew letter Yod, the fifth letter in Bereshit. Yod informs us that something amazing is going to unfold on the earth, something that will mark the end of one age and the beginning of something new. 
a new beginning. We know this has something to do with the prince coming out of his home in heaven, the prince coming out of the tent. Yod is the tenth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Ten is an important number because the primary meaning of the number ten, Yod, gives added spiritual significance to the picture Yod, the picture of the hand doing a divine deed. Yod, the number ten, is one of four sacred numbers, and it means ordinal perfection. The picture of Yod, the hand and the arm, informs us that God has ordained a plan in heaven, signified by Yod, the number ten, that is going to unfold as a mighty deed that is accomplished on the earth. Consider the number ten for just a moment. Zero is not a number. Okay, I just also want to remind you of the Finger of God meteor that flew over Great Britain um, for 10 minutes in, in, uh, on the Feast of Trumpets um, in 20, I think it was 2015. And um, I did a video of that back then, and that was the very first video I ever did. And that one I called, um, it was the Twin Owl. Oh no, I've actually called it um, Finger of God Meteor, um, something like that. I'll, I'll get to it at the end or something. But um, So I also want to point out too that what he's saying here, that it's coming, that there's two. You know, first of all, he, he talks about um, the teeth crushing or, it says, um, or being crushed. So, of course, that is what happened with Jesus, isn't it? The first time, this is talking about the two comings. The first time he came and he was crushed. The second time he comes, he's going to be the one doing the crushing. It's important. The cross marks the spot from which we can oh, forecast okay, every epic event. That... Tav, the final letter in Bereshit, is pictured as a cross. To be clear, the earliest Hebrew pictogram display this Hebrew symbol or letter as a cross. The pictogram displayed in this article is a faithful representation of the earliest Hebrew letter, Tav, pictured as a wooden cross. Tav, the last letter in the Bereshit prophecy, informs us that the divine deed ordained in heaven, number 10, will fulfill a covenant that will be revealed as a sign that is literally pictured as a cross. This sign will mark the center point of all human history from God's perspective. Everything that happened before this sign was sovereignly ordained in order to set the stage for this one single event. This is the one event that God considers the single most important event to happen on the earth Okay, so we all know what that is, praise the Lord. And um, now I, I just want to show you that um, we are at at the time of the second, the second coming. And this is cough, so remember, stay with me where I, where I started. It was about the cough is the Q. So Q relates to the cough. And, um, and the cough here is, is Hebrew. Is talks is the letter of holiness and growth cycles. It is said to allude to God's kedusha or holiness, and it relates to the word hakof or cycle. The idea is that all things proceed in cycles. On this note, Jews teach that man began in the perfect imperfection in the Garden of Eden and will return to paradise in the messianic era. era. And that, of course, is what I've been trying to say. You know, to, to explain to you that the whole this jubilee where we're at now where we have become where God has come down to ever from heaven is living with us and is now and we're lying on his back resting and he's back with us again and it's go it's like paradise and you know the, the garden of heaven where we're just covered with grace and that also relates to what's happening in Jerusalem and the Jews you know that the Lord you know, speaks of that time when he just wipes all the sins, you know, and, you know, so many people have said that the Jews have to receive um, receive Jesus and become Christians and that sort of thing, but that's just not true, that, um, that God is just, you know, like the time is over, the, ju the Jubilee has all, you know, 
all religions, this is how all religions, or not all religions, but um, the Abrahamic covenant, the Arabs, you know, the Jews and the Christians are going to be back with God again as they all came from Father Abraham. And God just does this amazing um, act of mercy. Um, so it says, um, the book of Hebrews lays stress on the holiness of Christ, who is pictured as the perfect sacrifice, neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. And it is, um, again, chapter 19, which is, relates to the cough. Um, and after the Revelation 19, 1 to 2 says, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honour and power unto the Lord our God, for true and righteous are his judgments, for he has judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and have avenged the blood of his servants. This chapter opens with a hallelujah chorus in verses 1 to 6, and in verses 7 to 10 we find the marriage supper of the Lamb, and we see the second coming of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and the destruction of the beast and those who follow him. At last the Messiah has stepped out of heaven. He arrives on earth to establish his kingdom. The cough is also, so Q again, said to represent Hakafa, the cycle of growth. Regarding cough, Rabbi Monk writes, the cycle of human history began in Gan Eden, Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden, where man's recognition of God was as clear as day, and where man and all animals lived together in perfect harmony through mankind's awareness of God Hashem. Weakened in course of history, it will return to its starting point in messianic times. Now, this also. Um, brings me back to this man's dream because he points to October the 31st now which um, you know in his dream the Lord points him you know points a finger to the October the 20, um, 31st now that just happens to be my, my father was called when I was two, two and a half but that was his birthday and um, but you will know it as um, you know it's been contorted into Halloween but in fact, October 31st, the reason that they've turned it into Halloween is because um, that is the day that the veil between heaven and earth is its thinnest. So that's why they, they, they have all the, you know, the ghouls and everything and the dead rising. So it, it, it represents the day that the dead come out of their graves. So this is, you know, pr pretty symbolic the way that this, that, um, the Lord would have um, pointed this out to him. So I'll just play a little bit of this this chap's... Um, um, unfortunately, as always, he sort of still tries to make it into a rapture, and I can't see and, uh, any reason why. I haven't why. said a lot about it, because I know when I, when I show this, it's going to make some people mad. And my life's, my life's not been the same since I posted that first stream. I never okay, so I don't know what he's talking about. I've never seen this guy before. But then I find it strange that people, out of your, that people are really getting on to him. Uh, out of your mind, primal scream. Everybody's head blew up at the same time. Oh, man, that is so insane. So I've only listened to this once. So everyone's head, that's incredible. I'll just um, read. I saw federally elected officials, faces I recognize. Um, I saw specific state governors. I saw agency leaders. And I saw just radicals, like the people you'd see in Portland or Seattle, Seattle or, or Minneapolis. Um, but they had wicks coming out of their head, almost like a, like a firecracker wick, like a firework wick. And the second week of October is when I saw simultaneously all those wicks coming out of their heads were lit on fire. Federal officials had heads that were the shape of like an old M80. Those folks from the 70s and 80s remember those. 
The governor's had a uh, head shaped like the black cat firecrackers, the, you know, one and a half, two inch firecrackers. Everybody else had the smaller, like, ladyfinger style firework, crack, you know, firecracker fireworks. And these people are talking and they're starting to get animated, they're, starting, they're yelling, they're screaming. Uh, the facial images went from normal and calm to red faced, jumping to an absolute out of your mind, uh, out of your mind primal scream. Everybody's head blew up at the same time. These people were still alive, but their heads had blown up. And this resulted in sparks and debris flying all over the area where they were standing, and it started fires around them. And then I saw the protests that were taking place, that were still taking place in October. They went up another notch, because the, the bystanders who were, who were part of the protests and that were there, that were not being very, very violent and not really getting us involved, the protesters basically said, if you're not doing that, you're not one of us. And they began to assault those protesters who were not deemed as violent or as vicious as they should be. And I saw some of those protesters left on the side of the road, almost like they were dead. They'd been beaten because they weren't protesting like the other ones were. They weren't doing all those things that they should have done. If they weren't complicit, they were beat on. I saw, I saw the elderly people, and this is what got me, I saw elderly people being attacked it was an attack on older Americans, the people that hold the Constitution dear, the flag dear, the people that have the, the, the common sense uh, values, commitment to faith and biblical principles. I even saw people trying to get into nursing homes and nursing facilities to attack, or burning from one corner. So, uh, this guy, I, I will... I was dying, the value of America. Okay, so then he goes on to talk about other things. So this is Dana Coverstone, October Dream, Revelation 3.10. Um, and he says, dead in Christ, escape, you know, at the... But there was nowhere on that um, dream that, that that I could see that, but I may be wrong. So I just want to finish off. Um, I hope, um, you know, you, you just look that up. And I'll just finish off with the second address again and my mark just put, fell out as usual um, this is second address number second to, to address as usual I can't find these the numbers whatever it is uh, four to five a king unwelcome to the inhabitants of the earth will it will succeed to the throne okay so you know who that is even the birds will fly away. I've done several videos of the birds just disappearing. The Dead Sea will cast up fish. Okay, this has come true. At night a voice will sound unknown to the many but heard by all. I can take you through my 2016 dreams and I probably will where I get up in the middle of the night I can hear this roaring in the, you know, in the, in the sky and, it, you know, and when I go outside I can't hear or see anything, but I can hear it um, when I'm in bed. It says, many will seek. Okay, then understanding will be hidden and reason will withdraw. So then understanding will be hidden and reason will withdraw to her secret chamber. In other words, people are just going crazy. Many will seek her but not find her. The earth will overflow with vice and wickedness. One country will ask another, has justice passed your way or any just man? And it will answer no. In those days, men will hope but hope in vain. They will strive but never succeed. Whoever is left after all that I have foretold, he shall be preserved and shall see the deliverance that I bring and the end of this world of mine. They shall see all the men who were taken up to heaven without ever knowing death. Then shall men feel on earth, then on men on earth shall feel a change of heart and come to a better mind. Wickedness shall be blotted out and deceit destroyed, but fidelity shall flourish. Corruption will be overcome and truth so long unfruitful will be brought to light. So this is talking about the teeth, the crushing of the evil. And this is what it's talking about also in Revelation 9 and 20, where Apollo 
you know, this angel is given the key to the abyss and comes down and destroys evil. And this is who I'm saying Donald Trump is. And then it says, listen, the time shall come when the signs I have foretold, so those are the ones I've just told you, will be seen. The city which is now an invisible shall appear. Okay, so that's talking about the city of Zion, the city of God. <clears throat> Everyone who has been delivered from the evils I have foretold shall see himself, my marvellous acts. My son, the Messiah, shall appear with his companions and bring 400 years of happiness to all who survive. So that, of course, is talking about the 144,000. And then I, I told you yesterday about the, um, then the place of torment shall appear. And then we've got, when it talks about the millennial kingdom, that day will, will be a day without the sun or moon or stars, without cloud, thunder or lightning. So that relates to uh, Revelation 22. So this goes back and forth. It's really interesting because, of course, you know, because this man, Idris, actually wrote the Bible, you know, the angel is telling him the beginning of the Bible as well. You know, so, you know, the whole the whole cosmos of of humanity is in this. So but then it but also the end times. That's why it's so incredible. Um So, because he also talks, you know, he's asking them um, whether you can pray for for people and save them from this end. And he said, but this is how, to this end I replied, but how is it then that we read of intercessions in scripture? First there is Abraham who played for the people of Sodom, then Moses who prayed for their ancestors when they sinned in the desert. And he goes on, and then the angel said, The present world is not the end, and the glory of God does not stay in it continually. This is why the strong have paid, prayed for the weak. But the day of judgment will be the end of the present world and the beginning of the eternal world to come, a world in which corruption will be over and excess abolished, and unbelief uprooted, on which justice will be full grown and truth will have risen like the sun, on the day of judgment. Therefore, there can be no mercy for the man who has lost his case, no reversal for the man who has won it. Okay, so this is, it's like at judgment day. So I wish I could show you also something I found today, which was the, the rising of the sun. And, um, but I'll just try and find this, this part where it <coughs> talks about the, the king who comes from the, because it, it also talks about <clears throat> while the lion was still addressing the eagle. Now the lion, I, I've told you in other videos, the lion comes down from the forest and he is the one who addresses the eagle. So he addresses the kings of um, America and all the evil. <clears throat> He says, then I heard a voice which said to me, look carefully at what you see before you. I looked and I saw what seemed to be a lion roused from the forest. It roared as it came and I heard it address the eagle in a human voice. Listen to what I tell you, it said. The Most High says to you, are you not only the survivor, the only survivor of the four beasts which I gave to rule over my world? intending that through them to bring my ages to an end. So that's relating to the four beasts in the vision of Daniel and, the, you know, the um, final empire. While the lion was still addressing the eagle, I looked and saw the one remaining head disappear. Then the two wings which had gone over to him arose and set themselves up as rulers. Their reign was short and troubled, and when I looked at them, they were already vanishing. Then the eagle's entire body burst into flames, and the earth was struck with terror. As for the lion which you saw coming from the forest, roused from sleep and roaring, which you heard addressing the eagle, taxing it with its wicked d deeds and words, this is the Messiah, whom the Most High has kept back until the end. 
he will address those rulers. Okay, so this is the second coming. He will address those rulers, taxing them openly with their sins and crimes and their defiance. He will bring them alive to judgment and he will convict them and destroy them. Okay, so this is, talks about the rider on the white horse with the sword that comes out of his mouth to destroy, destroy the nations. And the next night I had a dream. In my dream a wind came out of the sea and set the waves in turmoil. And this wind brought a human figure rising from the depths. Okay, this is bringing from, from the Isle of Lewis, from the depths of the sea. And I watched this man come flying with the clouds of heaven. Wherever he turned his eyes, everything that fell on was seized with terror. And whenever the sound of his voice reached, all who heard it, melted like wax at the touch of fire. Well, praise God, even China, the dragon, it looks like they realize that Trump is not messing around and uh, they are the ones talking about peace now. Next, I saw an innumerable host of men gathering from the four winds of heaven to wage war on the man who had risen from the sea. I saw the man hewed out a vast mountain for himself. So, you know, that's the stone cut out, cut without human hands. And he flew up upon it. But the mountain also speaks of the, um, you know, the riches, the tower that he has made himself. You know, a mountain is, is a kingdom. I tried to see from what quarter or place the mountain had been taken, but I could not. Then I saw that all who had gathered to wage war against the man were filled with fear, and yet they dared to fight against him. When he saw the hordes advancing to attack, he did not so much as lift a finger against them. He had no spear in his hand, no weapon at all. As I watched, he poured what seemed like a stream of fire out of his mouth, a breath of flame from his lips, and a storm of sparks from his tongue. All of them combined into one mass, the stream of fire, and the breath of flame, and the great s s storm. It fell on the host advancing to join battle, and burn up every man of them. Suddenly, all that enormous multitude had disappeared, leaving nothing but dust and ashes and a reek of smoke. I was dumbfounded at the sight. Well, this pretty much talks about what this man is saying, that they just explode, praise God. And I believe that we are very, very close to that happening. So please, get into the house, get into the tent, become the bride. Um, and, um, you know, don't believe what that they're telling you about, you know, him being the Antichrist or all the rest of it, you know, because that really is blaspheming the Holy Spirit because, you know, um, Trump is the second coming. And um, so, uh, yeah, I could show you more, and um, but hopefully this is not too long. But I hope you understood there too, you know, the significance of him being... Um, being the bull as well, you know, because you know, um, that and how that relates to planet X and all these storms, you know, the lightning when Jesus said he comes on the lightning and the clouds, and um, um, so you know, QAnon is the human way, and, and the lightning and the storms is the heavenly way. So, you know, what is happening on earth, you know, God is mirroring in heaven and um, with the return of planet, planet X as the bull. So I hope that's a confirmation to you. Um, it certainly was to me. So thanks for watching and God bless you all in Jesus' name.